welcome ASL SKers and ASL enthusiasts. We are going to actually play the game solo. This is Take It Back, S65. I believe this is the second scenario in the SK4 boxed set. Um, introduction to the Japanese into the starter kit package. There are many things that differ between the Japanese in the starter kit universe and the Japanese within the ASL universe. And not only the Japanese, but also the terrain features, the way ambushes can work, the results of ambushes, etc., etc. So when indulging in the Japanese in the starter kit system, please take into consideration that the ASL, if you were to just kind of say, okay, I've, I've done the Japanese in SK, I'm ready to go for ASL. It's not quite that easy. Uh, there's a lot of different terrain features close combat variations in close combat makes a big difference especially the idea of ambush and i kind of double realized it at the beginning of um this particular game whereas in the because the japanese have to do some a sort of fighting withdrawal in this scenario apparently at least that's the kind of the defense that i'm going to try to instigate is that in starter kit when the enemy enters your hex you're not leaving whether you ambush or not so when you get ambushed, there's no leaving. There's simply you rolling the die with a minus one modifier for ambushing. Typically, there's an ambush withdrawal. I don't really recall that to be a rule in starter kit. I may get that wrong. I'll double check that prior to starting, of course. But that makes a big difference because it's really easy for the Japanese to ambush the Americans. If they stay concealed, if they stay in jungle, uh, and they are determined to be stealthy, that gives them a minus four essentially dice roll mod die roll modifier upon the americans and that's not including a uh, leadership modifier that's probably never going to apply anyway japanese usually have a low modifier but the americans occasionally do have the modifier i probably would never take my american leaders into japanese close combat no just no just don't do it just don't do it another thing that comes into play in this particular scenario simply because we have hidden initially placed units. When units break, and there will be some Marines breaking this scenario, you have to understand where the Japanese have set up their units, that if you go randomly routing in just random directions, hopefully to get near your objective, and you bump into one of those hidden initially placed units, you will stop. He will potentially lose his concealment, and fully lose his concealment, and you will simply just die for failure to route. So remembering that, taking that into consideration, if you have a stack of units that needs to route, and let's say you don't have a leader with it, we're going to leave the leader out of it. Again, you must follow the principles of the routing and route them individually. Because if you have, I know a lot of units, a lot of players just go lazily, just kind of like route them both together. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to get into that bad habit of routing stacks of units together um, because bad things happen. Um, this is one of them, is when you route and you essentially detect one of those hidden units, you stop routing and you will die for failure to route. And then the next unit, again, if you had moved both of them, what you would then incur ir incorrectly would be both of those units to be eliminated. Well, one typically should be routing first, will detect the unit, get eliminated, and then the second one Hopefully, it won't have to go the exact same direction. There's a lot of jungle. It's highly unlikely that you have to go the same exact direction. So, therefore, you can use that information. Of course, you can't see him, but you know not to route that direction, um, which some people have a tendency to argue that you are omniscient, omnipotent. Yeah, we're playing a game. And uh, when I see a bad guy over there, I'm not going to route that way if I can route this way. And um, that's just the way it is. It's called a game for a reason. So, don't route both of your units together. R get in the practice and habit of routing them individually and sometimes you may want to route into a unit and cause that unit's uh, loss of concealment so i'll double check the concealment rules on that real quick and um just to make sure they coincide with uh, some of the asl principles but let me zoom back out again take it back at 65 throughout the discussion uh i went and revisited based upon my perception of what the americans need to do what I did was I adjusted my setup, my defensive setup. What I have here is the hidden units remain in the same position. I didn't want to bother with that. These units adjusted a little bit on the right-hand side or left-hand side. I put the light machine gun here, give it a little bit more spit fire right in the middle. He can cover more hexes. The 447 can cover hexes with spray fire, not spray fire, but first, subsequent, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this might be a little bit too far forward. This unit over here 
uh, the LMG, concealed LMG 447, simply to deter fast leader movement in this direction. Um, I don't really need to bother with lone squads because they can go one, one, two, three, four, five, six, and he'd be done. I'm going to shoot at him, and then during my turn, I'm simply going to leave. All right? So if he wanted to get on top of me, he'd have to go one, two, three, four, five. He couldn't get there. But only a leader going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven could possibly jump me in close combat. So at that point, I'm going to restrict it to these two hexes, and at that, and he'd have to send both of his leaders to get to U8 and U9 with one or two units. Only two units, because you're only going to be able to move two units through the dense jungle like we covered before. If these were light jungle, he could go th the stack of three through that location. So again, makes a difference on your defense. He, this, I know he, the only way for him to get to me is to go through there. So that's a stack of two. At that point, he will, he will lose concealment. I will most likely shoot him point blank and most likely get one unit pinned or broken. Therefore, uh, only incur uh, a one to two on the potential close combat in the ensuing close combat phase. Uh, one thing of note that is a counter error here it will be remedied, um, is that the units on the right-hand side are raider units. Units on the left-hand side on the bottom turn two reinforcements. These guys down here are paramarine units. I think they're called paramarines. So these do not have the minus one die roll modifier for ambush, which is very problematic considering I've got most of my Japanese over here. So that makes these leaders very valuable in terms of... In giving these units a minus one die roll modifier for any ambush situations. So hopefully we can remember that and take advantage of that. If I should happen to screw that up, make a note in the uh, comments below and say, hey, gotta remember that shit's due. So we're gonna go from there. Uh, I adjusted the top. Let, again, let them here. Um, I was considering a one unit over here, I really think I need to cover the U1 area to stop the sprint down the side. So I've got a firepower here. The problem is, is uh, a double timing leader with some squads can get pretty far. And he can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and advance, get behind me. So therefore I have to stick a unit in the way right there. I don't want him to be able to advance upon me. If he wants to advance upon this unit, that's fine. Then I could fire point blank into close combat. If he breaks, he's going to die. If my unit breaks, he's going to be step reduced and therefore remain active within the, um, Close combat phase one two three four five six and that's going to be uh any more any units moving into u1 will incur an eight minus two or a four minus two fire attack so that still might be a little bit too far forward for that four four seven but i'd rather at least yeah it's still i still might he might be considered to be moved back um i'll have to think about that very shortly but um let me set my americans up let me think let me review those rules which i previously just discussed and uh just to clarify before you begin the game and then I will set my Americans up pretty quickly. I still don't know where I'm going to charge them through. I might decide to go top heavy, um, considering the bottom. Again, moving the bottom is just going to reinforce these guys, which might be something that you want to do. Uh, you might need some more ambush ability by throwing bodies over here instead of leaders. So let me revisit that. All right, so the American turn one. I will be using dice. I'll be rolling on my um, gamepad mat thing. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have her here. You won't see them. I'll simply uh, roll them and announce what the roll is. And I'll be using the standard IFT. That's about the only thing we have. The only thing we need to hit is the mortar. The mortar will have a to hit value of seven at all ranges known to man in this game. And uh, so we really don't be, need to be using a chart for that matter um, because of the area target type. So here's the American setup. We're going to have the nine minus one leader, a five, five, eight Raider, five, five, eight Raider, right? This location. 8-0, medium machine gun, 5458, 558, and stupid stacking. There should be two mediums. There we go. For whatever reason, it starts to stack them, starts to merge the stack. So hopefully that will stop. I have one raider here. Well, two raiders there. I'm just keeping the concealments on them, two raiders there. And, uh, shit. I'll put the concealment. See, I'm not sure why that this is just a counter. It should stack right on top of it. Also, concealment loss is treated differently in starter kit as it is in advanced squad leader. When units enter the line of sight of a good order enemy unit, uh, which in this case is any concealed Japanese unit, you will lose your concealment. They do not have to reveal themselves. It does not state as such. It simply states one of those as the conditions. 
for the unit to lose concealment. So as soon as your unit's with concealment, move in line of sight of another unit that has concealment. Well, there are no dummies in starter kit. So that principle of revealing and deception is lost in starter kit. Again, another minor variation, but can make a huge difference in how you tactically approach a situation and trying to out trick or out deceive your opponent. Every concealment marker on the map here is an enemy unit, a regular OB enemy unit. All right. So, um, read your concealment section. I referenced the starter kit rule book many times just to make sure that these, some of these principles, which do indeed blend or bleed into ASL will differ quite a bit in their execution. So given that let's start, there is no wind. Don't need to roll for that garbage. As we said, last game, uh, probably not going to be a lot of firing. There absolutely is no prep fire. We're going to go straight to movement. Um, these units down here on the bottom, this unit here will move first. You'll go to X1 for one, W1. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to V1 for four. One, two, three, four. We are in line of sight of an enemy unit. We lose concealment. I'm just going to piggyback these concealments over here just as we keep moving. And I'm going to keep these units, at least these squads, in this orientation on the map to differentiate them from the para marines on the bottom of the map. So hopefully that won't confuse you guys. I don't have, again, I don't have the appropriate ones here. All of these units also have assault fire. So that's one thing to keep in motion. Um, I will not fire the 447 at this point. Uh, there are other units that have yet to move. Um, so since he did not fire, I'll simply lose the concealment here because I'm going to move him. He's going to go one, two, three, four into that location. And he will not fire this unit here. He'll go one, two, three, four in the, into that location. Again, it kind of really blends them. I don't want it to blend. Come on, there we go. No, I don't want you to blend. There you go. I have to figure out what the deal is with that. All right, so he will again, will not fire. At this point, you might as well fire in the advanced fire phase uh, or the defensive fire phase at full fire power two units. Probably still won't do that. Um, hmm. And again, the enemy could be on the V-Row. Anywhere there. Okay, this unit's going to double time. Okay. Uh, it's on the back side. It should be on the back side, to be honest with you. No reason why it's not. Uh, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. And I'll have to get a double time marker for you. All right, I marked him with a CX marker. Kind of put the counters over here. Don't need this anymore. Again, I don't, know, I don't really like that it stacks it like that. It's not necessary. All right, nine minus one will move as a stack. There are two units in there, as I stated earlier, and they will they will double time as well. You'll go two, four, six, eight at that location. And again, don't really like that the leader kind of pops up in the middle of that. That doesn't need to do that. I need the stack. All right. Other unit here. We'll just go, uh, hmm. He will also double time. Interestingly enough, these units will now have uh, seven movement factors because they have three portage point weapons. They will lose a portage point when double timing. The leader cannot assist in this case. So they will have Eight total minus one for the portage point excess, which we don't really care because guess what? One, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's about as far as we're going to be able to go anyway, even if it was eight. So American movement phase is done. Japanese defensive fire phase comes and goes. Uh, American advanced fire phase, we will fire. Uh, that needs to, that needs to not be there. That option needs to not be there. Okay. So we have these units here. We're going to fire as a fire group. Again, they have assault fire. Two hex range means it's going to be two and a half, three, four, four firepower for each unit. Um, halved. It's already halved for, that's what their firepower is in the advanced fire phase because you already halved it. You round up and add one. So they're all four. So that will be a six plus one, taking his concealment in effect on the on his concealment six plus one the roll is a six makes it a seven is a normal morale check on the six chart he will lose his concealment 
you will roll a normal morale check. Oops. And of course the dice go flying. That's one thing you have to worry about, Vazel, is your dice don't go flying anywhere. His morale check is a three. Excellent roll right off the bat, but he is con he has lost his concealment. So that's good for the Americans. Um, at least we did get a morale check out of it. No more advanced fire. We could take blind shots and um, you might as well, to be honest with you, take blind shots. Uh, so this would be a four plus two. We're gonna fire right here at a four plus two as the Americans. I rolled a three for that unit. So therefore that would give me a five. Um, if there are a unit there, he would be exposed. Uh, he would lose concealment and take the ensuing one morale check. That's not going to occur. No one's there. And then uh, both of these units will fire. Essentially, they're going to fire into the hexes that they're going to advance into. That's the whole point. So this unit will fire 8 plus 2 in this location here. Or 8 plus 1 because it's a 9 minus 1 liter. 5 makes it a 6 on the 8, which is a result. No one's there. The two medium machine guns, uh, those squads will fire into T4, which is directly ahead of this unit. 8 plus 2, 7 on the 8 chart. Uh, 7 rolled with a plus 2 on the 8, eight chart is a 9 with a pin task check, which would reveal units. Nobody is there. So the reason why I advance fired those units, they still they could be anywhere. Yeah, but I'm going to advance in those hexes. So I don't want to advance in a hex and get ambushed and then lose my leaders. This way, these two hexes are cl cleared 100%. And that's what we're going to do. There's no routing, advancing. We're going here. Nobody's there. No, I'm not going to get caught with my pants down. And these units will advance here. And all these guys are concealed. I wish it wouldn't stack like that. Um, this guy's going to be the... Yeah, we might as well. We're going to advance. Um, you know, we're going to take a chance. It's not going to make a difference there. He's not going to, he's going to flank us. We're going to come here. He's going to come here. He's going to go there. And he's going to go there. All right. So, my 548's right here. There's a CX under him. And so, that's going to put some pressure on this unit here. Most likely, again, he's going to retreat. And... Uh, Maybe retreat and make a line here, and then we can hit him with three squads as they come up. All right, so that is American turn one. Here's the turn marker here. Lip it. Japanese turn one. No rally phase. What I could have done is I had could have had these units, uh, a unit here. I was thinking about having a unit positioned up here, and then move him this way and advance him for defense on this side here. Uh, it's not going to happen. No prep fire is going to occur. Uh, movement phase. T4. Uh, some of these guys can counter exhaust. Two, four, six, advance. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to go two, four. You see, it's going to assault move here. This unit over here is going to. We're going to rotate the screen because now we're going to probably start focusing on these guys down here. And we're going to go one two, three, and then be done with that. So that's it for the Japanese movement phase. I think we're going to stay here. Again, we came off the front line here. Um, actually, we may we may want to move these guys, but those they're only going to move a little bit. Uh, I don't want to completely make this open. That's the whole point. Yeah, we're good to go right there. I think we're good to go. So um, American defensive fire. Um, I guess we could spray some areas. That's what that's what I that's what, that's what you should do as the American. Um, he might as well fire adjacent. That's going to be eight plus one. He's going to fire an eight plus two in this in these locations. Eight plus one, eight plus two. Actually, I'm not going to bother to fire at either of these locations, um, because if this unit was here and there's a hidden unit under his position, more than likely would have taken. Uh, an eight shot here and an eight shot there and attempted to break two stacks of units. That's that would have that's something that I would have done. I'm not gonna I mean you can roll since there's no no harm in start a kit. Eight plus one and rolls an eight would be a nine. Nobody's there. Eight plus two here, six makes an eight. There would be nobody there um, from the ensuing normal morale check. Uh, these units here as well, you might as well fire. Uh, it's a nine minus one. That's going to be an eight. Um, eight up one in this location here because it's point blank. Nine ten is no effect, and then we're going to have. Uh, let's see, we could fire four. Four mm, four two is not good. We're gonna fire everything here. Eight up two. 
Uh, yep, eight of two. Oops, those are the Japanese dice, not the American dice. Rule of nine and eleven means a miss is a miss on the eight chart. So no effects from here, so it doesn't give us any information. Um, again, so there's it for that. And uh, Japanese advanced fire phase. Let's see what we can do to prepare for the American turn too. And um, uh, I'm not gonna not gonna route. Obviously, nothing to route. I'm not going to move these units here because now these units are two four of full movement factors. These guys would actually technically these guys um, they they wouldn't have lost gain concealment. This Japanese unit will gain concealment at the end of the turn. But when the Americans go 2-4, I'd be able to fire with them the non-assault movement. So if they want to try something fancy, they could try that. And um, I think we're good with that. That's a decent position right there. Uh, the LMG here, uh, I think we can move to that location there. Not sure if that's the best. No, we're going to move to this location here. It covers the victory location. It stays near the front down here to kind of tie an area in here, although they could still move this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, advance. Um, yeah, we may have to, uh, we're gonna have to move a four, four, seven over here. And these guys will move, these guys will also shift. They're also going to shift. Again, we can still cover the direction over here. We have eight firepower defending the mortar. The mortar still has a two, three, four, five, and then a possible, or two, four, five, and then an advance into K3 if necessary. So, and plus now he gets shots at all these different areas here. So that's good for him. All right, so that's it for the Japanese player turn. I'm going to turn number two for the Marines. All right, so here we are beginning the American turn two. Uh, there is no weather dice roll in the starter kit, so thank God for that. Um, setting up the units, we have our first turn entourage up here at top, our Japanese defenders that we can see here, and our Japanese defenders here. Considering only the leaders down below here get the minus one ambush die roll modifier for being raiders, um, I might unfortunately have to throw them into the mix. I really don't want to, and I don't think I will. I think I'll throw them in later. I think um, I think what I will do is try, just try to overwhelm these two units right here in the middle in the dense jungle. Although we won't be able to combine fire groups in the dense, into the dense jungle between units, based upon the rules, I think we're going to just going to have to take my chances and just kind of try to overwhelm them. So I think I'll just simply take three different stacks, move them forward, uh, perhaps just have our leaders behind, just so we can. Uh, rally in a central portion i got to figure out what my rally point is here um if i come through this direction oh so getting back to it uh as i approach my units coming on they'll probably come in stacks of two um because i won't be able to move through the dead struggle any faster than that i can try to penetrate over here to try for the end run immediately will that do me any good uh i'll be facing an eight minus two i might be able to squeak by Get some units. If I break here, I simply route back this direction. That might prove to be a great reward. 12 minus 2 and 8 minus 2 is about the exact same shot. So, but I won't be able to get any faster. So I can go 2, 4, um, 6, and then 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I can have three stacks of 2 right here. And then blast and then advance. And if he wants to engage, shoot upon me, he can do that. And then I can just annihilate him at that point. I'm going to consider this not a dense jungle hex here. Um, based upon our previous discussion, this is a hill uh, that actually is, that might, uh, that might, that might have an LOS. No, not a chance. I was wondering if that one might have an LOS too. That location i'm going to zoom in here all that crap to the right is, is, is irrelevant so i don't really think i need to engage these units here serves no purpose if i could penetrate to the right into these three locations that would serve a purpose he could counterattack this way and try and destroy this unit i'm going to be advancing to the open ground anyway so i can go two four six advance in the third turn 
So I think I'm going to try that. Plus, if I can pound one of his leaders early, that would be good. These morale units are going to be eight morale. I think that's the best bet is just penetrate hard through this side. And those guys are going to capture this one. Uh, this one is not actually needed. We can bypass this one. We need these two. And on the way, these, these units can capture these two. And this could be the outlier. Whatever way we want to do it, these Japanese units are uh, not a priority. These are secondary units that will distract me from my objective. My objective, there's three victory hexes within this proximity. If I could be in this area to attack any and, any and each one, then it gives me the advantage. Whereas if I was just to attack from this direction, I go one, two, three. Really easy for the Japanese to defend. If I penetrate through here. So the Americans here have to make sure when they're going through, America turn two, this is what I'm looking at. We've got the victory conditions up ahead. We've got some intermediate defenders here, some flanking defenders here. This unit is not going to be a concern to the units on the bottom. So which way do we want to go? Do we want to come and attack this way through his defense to get to one victory location? And then these units will shift to defend that one. And then maybe these units will back up and also defend. So therefore he'll have a double wall of units. Or do we penetrate the right hand side? Shift units up, in his, up into his face. And get right on him. Maybe even engage in close combat here. If we eliminate this unit, then this unit here will have difficulty in responding to get and set up a block here. He'd have to set up a block on the other side because we'll have these locations covered under fire. This location and this location will come under fire from a surviving unit in this location. So he'd have to run back because he has to maintain conservation of firepower. Plus, he's the LMG guy. We run, He runs back here and sets up defense at this location, which is where he's going to go, pretty much going to have to go anyway. And he can make that two, four, and then advance. So we force him to go back there instead of coming back and making a wall here. But we have to slam these guys hard and fast, and we will take some broken units. Also, the corner that we have down, that we have down here, we look, we're looking at J9. as our rally point, maybe even K9 or J8, uh, because we're gonna have units in J7 and J8, J7, K8, L8, and maybe actually in this location, pressuring him. If we leave units in these two locations and we have broken units here in either of these rally locations, then um, it's highly unlikely that he'll fire at the broken units. It's possible, but unlikely. So therefore, even if we have broken units right directly into his face, we're going to have all types of units in, right on him. With eight morale, they can survive a 12 firepower shot, one morale check. Uh, they'll be pinned during the Japanese player turn. We don't really care about that. Uh, the pin will be gone at the beginning of the American player turn. And therefore, we will not be hindered by that pin unless he wants to jump us into close combat. That is highly unlikely because there's zero ambush in open ground. To be honest with you, J7 and K8 are probably the safest locations. Uh, simply because there's no ambushed opportunities for the Japanese, and therefore that eliminates one of his options to come on top of you. If if I were to remain in L8, not pressing, remain in this location, do not press, then all of these units can come and go for the ambush. There will be an ambush roll. The stealthiness of the Japanese unit in the positive one modifier for being into a jungle in close combat phase for an ambush die roll will negate one another, so it will be relatively the same, uh, possibly even to the Japanese advantage because they're going to have a concealment marker on them, most likely. So advantage Japanese. We don't want to give him that. So we're going to bust him in the face immediately and um, and send some units right in front of him. Let's, we're going to take some casualties, but let's see how it goes. All right, so here's the setup I'm going to have off board. We're going to enter um, these two units here, LMG, M10, L10, L8. LMG is going to remain behind, hopefully, if he doesn't break, to maximize firepower on units that might be coming across. 
eight minus one straight down the gut so he could bounce left to right seven zero right hand side so in case there's an opening he can power through on his own that's what we're going to go for and so let's just proceed with the turn uh prep fire phase i don't think we have any we might have some over here i don't think we will I think we're going to try and bounce. We're going to bounce these units. Two, four, six. We're going to bounce both these units this turn. Excuse me. And we're going to bounce them um, in the from the weakest positions. We're going to save the central position for our units to take up. So the 558 five, CX will end up being here simply because he can't move that far. And these units will lose, lose their CX status as well. We're going straight across. Uh, don't want to get up on the hill here because of this unit. We may have to move across. And again, you could choose to run down the middle. You could choose to run here. I don't necessarily need to get this position first. Uh, most players defending, if they just have a basic static defense, they'll probably put someone in that location to get a point blank shot here or minus shots here. So... We're going to move our non-medium machine guns first. Medium machine guns are the important factors. They get to move last, not moving them first. But let's go to movement phase. We'll move over here first and then go to the other one. So uh, this unit here will CX. I'm just going to steal his. We're going to go. How about that? Oh, there's two of them there. Two, four. And since he's CXing, I might as well fire because he's going to bounce me anyway. But we're going to let him bounce me. That way, if I cower, he just doesn't run past me. It's, he's not going to run past anyone. You're just not going to move there. This would be suicide if I faked going in there and then moving two more here. Because you're just going to subsequent and final protect the fire over here. And then he's just going to end up dying. So whether I shoot now or later, I don't really think it matters too much. But I will let him bounce me. So six here, he will bounce. The Japanese unit will lose concealment. And um, and we will fire. So that will be uh, an 8 firepower plus 0 point blank on the unit. I'll move that over so we have to see a lot of crap. It's going to be fire 8 firepower. 8 even. 7 on the 8 is going to be a 1 morale check. Eight morale should be should pay the price. Five, not a problem. Let me get a residual marker. All right, we got our four residual placed upon it. Um, to be honest with you, I think it would have behooved the five five eight better to drop a smoke counter. Uh, I think we're going to do that in our next one. So this unit in five five eight here is going to go two, and then he's going to drop a smoke onto this location here uh, for four because he can't fire at me until after I've declared. You know, obviously, you're waiting for the bump move to commit his move there. And then since he's going to drop smoke, I can't fire upon him to stop him from dropping that smoke. So he'll get his smoke die roll. He needs a one or two and a roll six. So actually, his movement phase ends, so he doesn't even get to bump me. But that's fine. Um, the second unit will attempt the same. He'll go two. And then... uh Actually, it doesn't matter. We're just going to move into it. Four. And then he'll have to bounce. I want these separate. God damn it. And then he will bounce. He will lose concealment. And then at that point, the 447 will not fire. We'll take the eight. Since there's two enemies in there, next turn I'll wait for the one shot. So, um, plus we have this unit here we could actually fire group with. So. We're looking at a spot right here because we have three other guys to come along. And um, this unit here doesn't need to double time. But he's going to go two, four, and lose concealment. And then uh... All right, and so uh, we'll continue from here. I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and first fire. Let me clone this. We're gonna, I'm just going to clone a couple. 
be done with it. So we're going to first fire this unit onto the 558. These units won't be able to occupy this guy's location, or if he wants to go over here, that's fine and dandy. We're going to subsequent, hopefully this thing will flip to have a final fire. So we're going to first fire this unit, subsequent first fire this unit onto this 558 entering the heavy jungle or dense jungle. That will be a 12 fire power plus one shot. Non-assault movement into plus two jungle. Uh, two, oh, the guy in the dense jungle can't do a fire group, can he? No, he may. This is a dense jungle unit. Unit in dense jungle may not form another fire group with another unit that occupies some other form of dense jungle, kunai, or bamboo. Well, the kunai is jungle, so I think we're sitting in that kunai previously. So that is an eligible shot. And see, these things like this, these rules like this, is what you have to understand. Again, over here, neither of these units can join a fire group. It would be better off if, these, if they were staggered or positioned in the victory location in here. Therefore, they could combined for a fire group. Here they cannot. So that's interesting, which again, makes this assault here on this side, detracting from my movement right now, more valuable because those guys can combine fire, uh, combine fire attacks. So back to here, oh, it's gonna be a 12 plus one. Let's go Emperor, shots for the Emperor. Uh, 10, double five, we'll cower them. That'll be an eight, this guy will be final fired. That will leave uh, four residual, so we'll just clone this. So not a problem. So at least we have some residual there. Uh, didn't really want to final fire that guy, to be honest with you, because I wanted a subsequent first fire that shot here with the hidden unit. So I may have to rethink my hidden units um, as right now. So five, five, eight's here. We're going to run right into it. We're going to go two, four, take the four plus one residual. Viva France. Uh, nine is going to have zero effect. And the same thing on the right hand side. We're going to go two, four, take the four even residual. Whoops. Of course, it pops out of my leather dice roller. An eight. This, uh, don't ever buy these ever again. Uh, so that would be a no effect on that unit. Well, barely on the four chart. Wow. Mr. Pinchak. He has final fired. Um, If I find a protective fire on that unit over here, that'll be a four even shot. And he's going to have three to one instead of two to one. I might be able to ambush him, might be able to go. Um, it's going to be a one to two anyway. He's going to take the shot. He's going to find a protective fire on, oh, that one CX unit's not going to come in, is he? I'm going to final protect the fire on the unit that just moved that's not CX'd. So we do roll an eight and that has no effect and he will step reduce, unfortunately. All right. Um, all right. So none of these guys, see, nobody else CX except for one unit. Okay. All right, the leader. Uh, leader loses his CX. He's going to lose his concealment. We're going to go two, four. Take the four plus one shot. Rolls a six on the fourth chart. Is a normal uh, six plus one is a pin task check. American must roll the nine. Come on, you bastard. Six makes it easy. All right. So uh, that's that. Let's see where we want this medium machine gunner to go. We want them on the hill, right? Okay, so one at a time. Not sure why the mediums are like that. So we're going to go four, four movement factors up on the hill. And then I don't want to take that guy on quite yet. And he'll move four on it. And then the leader will, and then the leader will go up here as well. So um, all these guys are still concealed. They're all up on the hill. They're going to advance here to pressure this guy to do whatever he needs to do. Again, since no one's defending this area except for this one guy, we're just going to move one hex at a time. And again, we need the medium machine guns. Their primary mission 
is to attack this unit with 12 firepower. Their primary mission is not to take Q5. Their primary mission is to attack this location right here. Well, some of you might be saying, oh, Stu, you see the guy right there, and you know what this guy is. Yeah, but he doesn't need to, there's no need, it's not necessary. Obtain, moving this way is not obtaining his destined, his designated form of attacking this location because he's going to have his mortars, most likely he's going to have his mediums on that location defending against my third or fourth turn attack. Probably my fourth turn attack. So those guys need to be there to break that, all that shit up. That way I can charge him point blank range at his three firepower. So necessary. We've got our we've got our massed troops over here on the right hand side, attacking solidly. Nobody's injured yet. We're just going to move forward in a singular force, um, and go from there. And so uh, let's move the other side. See how we do over here. So uh, we're just going to CX this unit here. And of course, there's no CX right here, of course. On the counter. One, two, three, four. And then he's going to blast him. So he's going to fire eight even on the American unit, the American scum. And we roll an eight. Eight on the eight. We all know. You better know. That's a morale check. You got a para, para marine. Come on, you bastard. He rolls a 5. He's fine. That leaves 4 residual. Let me increase this in size. Two, four, uh, one, two, three, four. He can fire again. He has first fired. Right there. Should we fire again? Should we fire mortar? Well, he doesn't need to move anymore. One, two, three, four. To be honest, he doesn't need to move anymore. Um, and we don't need to fire again. Uh, next unit. One, two, three, four. We're going directly in there. Might, I might reduce the size of these guys. Gonna get clumpy. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that. All right, one, two, three, four. Uh, takes a two, a uh, four residual, four residual attack, four even. Rule six on the four chart is a normal morale check. Paramarine eight morale rolls a six. Again, your eight morale units should be able to withstand these normal morale checks quite easily. They should be able to shrug them off. Two-thirds of your units will be getting past all the normal morale checks. So, so far, so good. Wow, that's kind of, um, that's kind of impressive. So let's see what happens with this guy. Here's the gusto. One, two, three, loses concealment. Four. All right, so what we're going to have to do here is we're going to subsequent first fire with this unit here. Um, the mortar guy's got a leader. He'll be able to fire a couple times. We want to protect J7. Um, from point blank fire, so that will be a four minus two attack on the American unit in K8. A nine makes that a seven, which is a pin task check, and of course, he pins. So, we've got the pin on the guy there, he is done moving, he's only expended one movement factor, and that is two residual firepower. And we can change that to a two, put that right there. Okay, sounds good. Next unit will go um, one, two, three. We're gonna go four. I don't want it to stack, don't stack. One, two, three, four, take the two minus two. Six on the two chart is going to be a one morale check after the minus two application. One morale check to the five, five, eight. He rolls an eight and he will break. It's not the four minus two, it's not the eight minus two shots that break you. It's the small little stuff. 
Do you want to find a protective fire upon that? This unit can. He can. You know, we're the Japanese. We need to inflict casualties. We have two squads over here that can replace us. I'm going to final protective fire the unit in L7. That will be a 4 minus 2. I roll a 7. Makes it a 5 on the 4. One morale check and a pin check for the... Oh, let me just call it. Pin check. Glone. He's pinned. And uh, one morale check for the broken American. He rolls a six. He's fine. That's his only shot that he can take. He's only expended one movement factor. So he's pinned. All right, which means it uh, doesn't bode well in close combat, but that's okay. We had a good chance of casually reducing him. We didn't get destroyed. And again, we have units on the right-hand side on our flank that can replenish our, our, our losses. All right, <clears throat> eight minus one. We're going to move him last again because we have two other units to move. Um, huh. All right. Um, move them all together or not. Let's do it. We're going to move them all together. Two, four, six. Let's get see how are gone. Again, the only thing you re he'll really have, this one's gone as well, is uh, the mortar, which will open up. So, um, technically, Kelso will current can, Sar Sergeant Ken, seriously? Uh, Sergeant Ken will um, maintain his concealment. He doesn't need to direct the mortar. The mortar will fire upon these units. Um, that's going to be a base 7 to hit. So, let's go, Mortar Boy. We roll a 6 to hit. Double 3. No rate of fire. That will be on a 2 firepower chart. Minus 1. Rolling an 11. It yields no result. Uh, we did not get rate of fire. Um, however, we will fire the 447 itself on those units. And we are not going to have the leader direct. Uh, actually, it doesn't really... Yeah, we're not going to have the leader direct. We need the extra morale. So it's going to be a four even shot on those units. And uh, an eight is not going to be sufficient. So he'll be first fired. All right. So the last unit to move is the eight minus one. We still have lots of residual. That's going to be a... Technically, a two firepower landed here. The air burst will increase it by one. So instead of being one firepower... It will then be two firepower residual in this location. Uh, eight minus one will simply assault move up. Uh, you know what? He is going to... One, two, three, four. He's going to move here. He will take the four even residual. It's going to roll an eight. It will have no effect. And the reason I moved him up there is to essentially attempt to break this unit, reduce his strength even further in close combat. So when these units move in, um, since he's pinned, he's broken, both these units may have to move in. Um, that might be iffy. That might be big iffy. And so um, let's see what happens with the rest of the plan here. So that's all the American movement. Residual firepower comes off. Wow. Uh, this unit will only subsequent first fire on units adja adjacent to it. So that's the only shot that we got. Still, no leader direction. Uh, we don't care if we cower. We need a low, low enough roll anyway, and the leader's concealment is much more valuable than not cowering a column. We don't give a shit. So it's going to be a four-even shot. An eight. Japanese aren't really roll rolling so well. That's it we got over here. I think these guys, these guys are final fired. Unfortunately, I think the Americans are going to jump in close combat here. Um, the question you have to ask yourself, if I fire an 8 firepower here, will that be sufficient to overcome the ambush there? I'll have a minus 1, potentially a minus 1. I'll have be concealed, so I'll have the minus 1 in ambush um, versus the fire shot. 
Uh, the three four seven will subsequent press fire though. He'll fire a uh, two plus one on this location here. On that location right there. So two plus one. An eight. God, man. It's not kicking it. And uh, that's it for him. Um, I see nothing but these guys just moving up forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep him concealed. Um, that way... Yeah, I'm just gonna keep him concealed. I'm gonna I'm gonna bank on the on the um ambush die roll. I need that minus two modifier because these guys are gonna get jumped by this unit and this unit. They're simply going to advance forward. These guys advance forward and then um and go with that. And these guys, um at least one of them will advance forward. Maybe both. We could do both, because that's only gonna be a maximum of twelve firepower. We're we're about it. If we can't withstand the twelve firepower, then so be it, whatever. So that's the idea there. So let's back up here and see the overall picture so far. We've got the Americans pressing, pressing on both sides on almost diametrically opposed corners of the map. Uh, the attack down the bottom left is not going so good. Okay, so that's going to be defensive fire. Seriously? So defensive fire will remove the first fire markers. I really hate that that needs to be removed. That's just stupid. I don't need to know what the counter. I know what the counters are. Um, that option's just dumb. So we put the whole the whole action, hopefully on the screen. So advance fire. Let's go. Uh, let's go over here first. We're going to have, um, essentially it's going to be 12 firepower. These guys are going to be two and a half, run up three or add one, doesn't really matter. Um, two and a half plus one, three and a half, round up four, four, four. And he will be four because he's point blank. And uh, he's two and a half and then one and a half, right? Or one and three quarters, rounded, add one, two and three quarters, add one, three, and then doubled for six. Actually, actually a six. Yeah, because he's double twice. That'd be one and, a, one and a quarter. One and a quarter plus one, two and a quarter round up to three. Doubled for being point blank, six. All right, I'll take it. Okay, it's going to be 12 firepower. I'll take it. Um, I think the math's right. Yeah, right? Because five, two and a half is advanced fire. Right? Then... You divide that again by being pinned, so it's one and a quarter, and then you double that to two and a half, and then you round up, and you add one to three and a half, and make round up to four. All right, yeah, well, so be it. Five, five, eights are badasses. Assault fire is badass, dude. Pin unit with four firepower, that's crazy. So we get 12 firepower plus one on this selected target here. Uh, six plus one on the nine zero, of course. 12 plus one, roll a 10, no effect. That would be Mr. Pintashek by one. We'll fire both of these units here combined with the eight minus one's leadership, massive leadership. So we have uh, 10, um, add one for each, 12, we're not going to do fire the LMG, 12 firepower plus two because of the CX, and then minus one for the leadership modifier. So that'd be a 12 plus one shot. Let's go Yankee. We got a six. We got a seven it was a one morale check. This Japanese unit can shrug that shit off. And we rolled a four. So he's fine. He's good to go. Um, this is going to be really gruesome in close combat um all right so he's pinned there and then the advance fires over here uh we might as well advance fire it's point blank and s6 considering we're going to advance into that location later um we're going to fire both units uh it's going to be 12 firepower and then a uh, half for adjacent or half for a concealed unit so uh six six of one ten no effect Technically, that'll be a blind hex. Um, at that point, to be honest with you, um, this could be double danger because if the Americans are moving to here and that's a that's a uh, concealed unit, hip unit, he could be stuck in close combat and then this unit here can pound him point blank fire while they're in close combat. Um, so that's a decision you have to think about, about where your opponent is going to be putting his units. 
And uh, when you move, when I advance into here, this unit don't doesn't get revealed until at the, um, uh, I believe, the beginning of the, or the end of the advance phase, beginning of the close combat phase. So as soon as I advance in there, he doesn't become revealed. That way it doesn't affect the, the impact of these other units over here. Um, I really hate that stupid stack. I'd rather have it staggered like that. All right, so advance fire over here. Um, uh, that'll be... Shit, are you kidding me? 12 plus 2? That's a lot of firepower. A 10 plus 2 is 12. Same thing in the middle. It will be a 12 plus 1. 9. I roll it at 8. Makes it a 9. Normal morale check. Ooh, an 11. His ELR is 4. No problem there. And then um, these units miles will fire there as well. 12 plus 2. An 8, 9, 10. We'll make it a pin pass check. And he rolls a 4. He's quite fine. All right. Hmm. Japanese better roll some dice. All right. Let's go with the uh, route. Nobody's. Oh, we got one broken unit over here. He simply ha I'm simply going to route him back one location. And then advance. Let's do advances over here. I think we're going to advance one guy here. We're going to advance him over here. Because this guy's a 347. I don't like how the 9 minus 1 leaves. And then these units are going to advance up into here. All right. These units over here don't really want to move my LMG in there. But... Then it's both these units this this direction. You know what? We're gonna move our leader over there as well. And then uh five five eight's going in here. Eight minus one's coming over here. Alright, ambushes, let's start here. We've got lots of different modifiers going on here. Uh, this unit is not a raider unit. It is a paramarine. He's going into jungle and he's CX. So that's going to be plus one CX, plus one jungle. Uh, Japanese unit is stealthy unless pinned. I'm not sure. He is stealthy, but yet he is pinned. So his pin status will negate his minus one close combat dice roll modifier, which is really big. So... Uh, Japanese, you have a minus one. Uh, Americans have a plus two. So it's a net three. Uh, green will be the Americans. Americans roll a six. Japanese roll a four. The Americans are ambushed. The Japanese units will declare hand to hand. Um, uh, it doesn't say hand to hand cannot be. Selected. Maybe. Was ambushed and or is pinned. No. He's pinned. So if he's pinned, he cannot do hand-to-hand. -hand. Wow. All right, so no hand-to-hand -hand for the Japanese here. I think that helps out for the Americans because the... Uh, hmm, he'll have to wait a turn. So he does get ambushed, uh, but it is minus two. So it will be a one-to-two minus two for the Japanese. Um, that means it's a four base... Minus two. Oh, actually, it's worse than that because the Japanese pinned. So two to five is going to be a one to three. Two to five is a one to three. Minus one CX, minus one ambush. All right. Uh, needs five. And he rolls a seven. American unit returns fire. He'll have a one to one plus two. One for being ambushed, one for CX. The American unit needs three. The American unit rolls a six and a caught die, but we're just going to roll. We're just going to count as a six. So this unit is now in melee. Not even hand-to-hand, -hand, just regular melee. So, uh, okay. Well, that kind of stinks for both sides. And then 
we'll clean up this corner over here that will just be removed pinned the mirror comes over here all right so we have to roll for ambush here in this case this is going to be a little different so this guy comes on he will come on with concealment all right he come on comes on with concealment this is a raider unit it does not look like it but it is that's why we have him facing this general direction so the raider unit is a minus one in for ambush die roll modifier the japanese unit is a minus three as a dice roll modifier and the american unit is a plus one for ambushing into jungles the japanese unit concealed has a minus three net modifier if i've calculated that correctly oops let's get him in the let's get him in the bucket baby uh, japanese roll of five america's roll of six of course and the japanese ambush yet again here the, the instance is a little different because the japanese are not pinned in this case so the japanese will attack they have to oh, actually they ambush them so if i kill you in conceal if i kill you in close combat i get to keep my concealment so that will be a one to two we will go hand to hand because it is ambushed and they are not pinned base hand to hand attack on a one to two is a six minus one for japanese that is not pinned is a seven and a minus one for ambushing is an eight for a casualty reduction and we roll a stinking ass 10. um well it sucks damn that's an easy kill that's an easy that's that's the kill that the japanese needs god damn it all right the american has to counter attack he's ambushed at plus one he's a one to one plus one and of course he rolls a snake eyes and um so now that's a bunch of bullshit um so snake eyes means the unit is eliminated and we have a leader creation in close combat uh not applicable to J Finns or japanese minus one die roll modifier if the unit is us minus one if the unit had a morale level of greater than or equal to eight all right all right i roll six minus two is going to be a five you'll get a seven zero leader that's exactly what the japanese didn't want the americans to have because now they have greater mobility so wow even ambushed him all right these other units um same thing uh, except no minus two minus one stealthy uh plus one for the jungle essentially makes it a uh plus two well the plus one jungle minus one stealth minus one raider i roll modifier cancel so the japanese have a net minus one for stealthiness come on let's kick some ass over here at least all right let's go all right, we've got a two and five. The Japanese have ambushed yet again for the third straight time in a row. Uh, that will be, since he's uh, one unit will be a one to two, and two units will be a one to four. Uh, we're going to take both units at a one to four minus one because uh, a one to four hand-to-hand -hand close combat is a five. We ambush him is going to be a six, and we are first line units. And that will be a seven for casual reduction at one to four odds. And we roll a six and we eliminate both American units. Ow. That friggin' hurt. All right. All right, venturing forth to the last close combat. Oh, we've got a leader here. So here we've got the single squad. That's going to be, this is going to be a minus two plus one for the jungle for the Americans. So it's a net minus one. Japanese are minus one. This is going to be an even up shot for ambush. And it's a six, four, no ambush. So at least the Americans get to have get their roll off. So the Americans will obviously attack at, that's a six, it's a three to one minus one. Three to one minus one in non hand to hand combat is going to be an eight for casualty reduction. And I roll an eight and I'm going to roll a minus one for a leadership modifier. So that will make it a seven. So three to one that will eliminate the Japanese unit. But he gets to attack back. 
he might as well see. One to two would be his best shot at non hand to hand combat. He needs a four for CR. He rolls a six. He misses him. Hmm. Hmm. That's problematic. All right. Japanese on the other side have to do some really good soul searching. All right. That's it. Uh, routes, concealment gains. Um, I'm not going to bother over there. Uh, no concealment gains. Japanese turn two. We proceed with the rally phase. We're going to rally unit in K9. American rally. He rolls a three. He pops right back up. What happens when you have eight morale? Pops up here. The melee here. Can't do anything about that. And we've got some units right next to me. All right. I guess we got to skedaddle before our side over there got destroyed. All right, makes it easy for the Japanese. No prep fire. I think we're just going to move. These units are going to move. Two, four. Two, four, five. Uh, he's going to go two, four. Well, that whole front got through. All right, we're going to go two, four. Hmm. Man, this here will salt move here. I still did kill some good units over there. He's only got one, two, three, four units. Uh, he'll go two, three. That'll give me some options to move in any of these locations. Yeah, I think we're okay there. Two, three. We're going to let this guy go by himself. Defensive fire, we could blast into here. Um, that might be an option. If we reduce him by one, it doesn't change the odds whatsoever. All that does is increases our likelihood of our unit being broken. There's no need to fire in this location. If that were a normal enemy unit instead of a Japanese unit, we might consider trying to break him, but we won't be able to. Matter of fact, uh, yeah, that's going to make a difference at all. We'd have to double break him. If we go 2-4 over here, that's a plus 2 event. And we'll still be concealed. Yeah, we're going to go 2 4 over here. Oh, actually, it doesn't matter. We'll stay there and then we just advance there. All right, units over here. You'll have to move, likely. All right. He's going to assault move here for two. This unit will fire upon him. Uh, those are the only units that's going to fire. And then we'll just continue from there. I won't need to mark him. All right. So that'll be an 8 plus 1 from the 7. Oh, 8 plus 2 from the 7, 0, and 5, 5, 8. Well, an 8 makes it a 10. That's going to be a no effect whatsoever. Uh, advance fire will come. There will be no advance fire other than the 3, 4, 7, which will fire back at him. At a 3 plus 1, the 7, 0. Roll 6. That will be a miss by 1. Wow. Not too bad. The pin task check is meaningless at that point. Um, so moving on, uh, there's no route phase. There is an advance phase. Mm. Huh. All right, we'll advance here, and we will.
advance here. You'll advance here. You'll advance here and not be CX in starter kit rules. And at the end of the turn, that unit will gain concealment. You'll advance here to allow fire attacks into K7. And this unit might be able to actually be able to fire into the melee. So that's what we're doing here. Following the road, so we'll have to smoke it. Okay, all right. Not bad for the Japanese, even though they got hammered a couple of times. So good advancements there. Rotate the map here. Zoom out a little bit. Hmm. Huh. All right. We have no other advancements. We have a close combat here. This will be a hand to hand. The American unit is still is still counter exhausted. So we need to kill this unit here right now. So that will be a one to two minus two as the Japanese are minus one and the American unit is counter exhausted. One to two minus two hand to hand. We need a base six. I roll a six minus two be a four. American unit will be eliminated. American unit gets a one to one plus one in hand to hand combat. He needs a six for casualty reduction. I should roll the American dice. He rolls an 11. He gets nothing. So, those units are gone. That unit remains. All right. Looks like we're going to do some ass kicking as Americans next turn. Let's see where it goes. Heading on to Marine turn three. All right, American turn three. Um, what we're looking for here is the Americans need to, um, uh, they only have three turns left. We need to get back to here. We need to take care of this three, four, seven, and we need to bust ass to try and get up on the hill. Uh, one development that has occurred, this unit does not gain concealment because he now has a line of sight to our units over here. So he does not gain concealment. Um, so that opens up our 12 firepower attack, which we need the entire game. We need to do something here, either bypass them. Two, three, four. We still need four. Most likely we... This guy could always come down here and, and collect this. Most likely. But we need our leader over... Well, we actually do have a leader over there. We need all four squads to go this way. These four squads and these squads need to just pound this area here. But here's where we need to split them up. All right. Took three casualties as the Americans last round. Three full squads, two full um, Japanese squads. We're eliminated, so it's a three to two ratio. We're slightly ahead of where we need to be as the Americans. Um, the problem is we don't we break, they do not. So um, what we may do here is we may uh, actually prep fire on this unit here twice because we just don't want a single break. First and foremost, uh, rally phase we have nothing to rally, and so we'll go to prep fire phase. We'll go ahead and prep our. And over here, loose concealment. And we will prep our 8, 12 chart. 12 chart plus 2 into K3. 12 plus 2 to K3. Roll an 8, 9, 10 on the 12. Makes it a pin task check. No effect versus the concealed unit. Uh, the 7, 7, 4, 4, 7 has an 8 morale because it's with a leader. Pin task check. And he rolls a four piece of cake, no effect. All right, it's going to be interesting right there. That's going to be interesting. All right, any other prep fire? Mm, that's a good 12 plus one, reduces the firepower. Yeah, we're going to fire. Uh, LMG here is going to prep fire. I'm just going to clone this. And we're going to fire adjacent at 12 plus one against the Japanese unit, hopefully trying to step reduce him. Um, eight is the roll. Nine would be the result, which would be a normal morale check. Normal morale check on the unit will pin him, which means we can engage him in close combat and not have to worry about getting hand to hand. Big difference. Okay, we've pinned him. That's fine. And we did not retain fire rate on that unit. Hmm. What to do? What to do in the bottom right corner? What to do in the bottom right corner? Pin unit. We should be able to buy him pretty easily. 
two minus two is the worst shot that we're going to get. You just need to fire four even over here. We've got eight morale. Let's just continue moving. We just need to continue moving. We'll deal with this guy later. All right, so we will move. And uh, we'll just start down here. We're going to go... Uh, We're going to go two here. And um, this 447, I think, will fire out him. Uh, that will be a four, four even shot on the 447. That's not much, is it? Yeah, four even. I'll roll a three on the four chart, which makes it a two morale check. American rolls snake eyes for the morale check. Wow, three and two. Uh, that will leave two residual. And then the uh, the unit will then drop smoke on the pin unit. Attempt to drop smoke on the pin unit for four. He succeeds by rolling a two. Uh, where's our smoke? I'll get the smoke. All right, found the smoke. Placed it on the unit. We're good to go. Uh, he does get attacked by the residual firepower by expending more movement factors in the hex. And he hasn't been attacked by the residual firepower yet. So that's a two even because he's not assault moving. An eight on the two chart has no effect. We're proceeding with other movements. Um, eight minus one, five, five, eight. We're simply going to go one, which the smoked unit will have to fire upon. And that will be a four plus two. It'll be a plus three coming out of the smoke. Minus one non-assault movement, four firepower, doubled in half, is four up two. Wow, that's huge. I roll a five on the four, though. That is a pin task check. Pin the leader. Leader rolls a three. Unit below him rolls a seven. That's uh, not a bad shot, to be honest with you. Flip that. No residual firepower to be had because the smoke will reduce all that stuff off the chart. So we'll go one, two, three. Actually, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Well, we'll bypass that. We'll go two, three, four, five, six. And here's where the LMG will have to light them up. Because uh, no other unit, pretty much only these units are going to move. They're probably going to move to these locations. That'll be a six even shot from the Japanese unit. He rolls a nine. A nine on the six is no effect. We are not going to subsequent for Spire. But we do leave a two residual. All right. So nothing's happening there. Um, all right. Let's go with the seven zero. We're going to go two, four, six. And um, the leader will direct a shot at the, at the leader. And the squad, no mortar, so the squad will first fire. Uh, that will be a four even shot with the leader. A four on the four is going to be a one morale check of the seven zero. Rolls a three, five, five, eight. Rolls a three, good lord. All right, that's two residual as well. Ends that unit's movement at six. The unit here will move two, four into the eight minus one's location. We'll take a two even residual firepower attack. A nine will yield no result. The uh, four, four, seven will subsequent first fire, not using the LMG. He's going to fire a two firepower even, same location. Uh, Twelve will not do anything. All right. Lots of residual, not, not, not anything to do about it. I think this guy fired already. He's going to be final fire. No one else is going to be able to move. Wow. I didn't expect that to happen. Okay, he prep fired. These units have to move over here. All right. Okay, this unit's going to go... Let's see, hold on. We're going to go two. 
Uh, unit's not going to move. He's going to drop smoke on that particular unit for four movement factors. He rolls a two. Wow. All right. That makes that easy. And then, um, yeah, he's not going to fire the plus two. That just made it a little easier for the Americans. All right. Take the counter exhaustion off. This unit's going to go one, two, two here, and then uh, drop smoke into P1. Let's see, can I even go up in that direction? Hmm. There's a meeting machine gun in N2, N1, or N0. Where can I route to if I go to N01? I could still... No. Uh, I could still route away. I would take interdiction. But my morale levels will be 9 and 8. That shouldn't be a problem. It's going to be a lot of firepower, though. Um, hmm. So we're just going to send this unit up here. 1, 2, 3. We do not get the path because the path comes this way. But you know what? We're, we might as well just move straight forward. We're going to go one, two. Uh, it's not going to leave your, might as well, and he might as well fire because it's not going to leave your residual anyway. So that will be a six plus two shot from the Japanese unit. Six plus two. And I rolled 10, no cower. First fired. No residual. One, two, three. And he'll drop smoke in his location. For his last one, rolls a five, no effect. He ends his movement there. Uh, in that case, I'm not going to leave the nine minus one up there. Um, we kind of have to, don't we? Okay, seven zero is going to double time. He's going to go two, four, five. Six. Seven, eight. I'm not going to have any bouncing. I was wondering if there might be a machine gun nest here. There was a machine gun nest there covering this road. That would be a problem. So that's a free move there. Uh, so that means I could at least move through here and not get the minus one moving the open. So this unit here will move. Oh, there's two squad. Oh. One, two, three. We're going to move one, two, three. And the other unit. And again, we can route, regardless of the location, we can still route this way. We'll go one, two, three, four, five. But that guy, he's moved. This guy's moved already. One, two, three, four, five. All right, six. Go up the path. There could be guys here and here, both sides. Could be on both sides, to be honest with you. That might be too risky. Four, five, this is turn three. I think it's what we got to do. That's just simply what we have to do. Or wait for more units to move. We're going to move there. All right. Also, that makes a problem for the medium machine guns. Who do the meeting machine guns fire at? The guys that could be advancing right next to him. He'll have to fire here. Mortar will fire here. All right. For the Japanese side, this guy's already fired. He's fired. The mortar does get to fire. The mortar will fire back up on the hill. Needs a seven to hit. In defensive fire phase, needs a seven to hit. 
and rolls a five with a non-rate of fire. So that would be a two minus one on the units on top of the hill. And I roll a three. Holy shit. That is a two. That will be a K1. Who gets it? White is the leader. We, the white, does get the kill. It does get the casualty reduction. Let's see if he bites it. And he does bite it. The leader will die straight up. Oh, this is turn three. So, leader bites it. Those guys get two morale checks, right? K2, K1. One morale checks on the remaining units. So, top unit rolls a 10. Next unit rolls a 9. That is not good. I don't really like it that how these stupid machine guns are there. So, where's our DM marker? All right. So he is DM'd there. Good shot. Only the first shot. The only shot that he's got. And then the mediums will open up adjacent. In that case, it'll be a 16 plus 1. 16 plus 1. Then roll a 7 with rate of fire. Is an 8. Is a 1 morale check. Leader needs an 8. Leader rolls a 10. Unit needs a 7. Rolls an 8. Both units will break. And we get rate of fire. Fire again, 16 plus 1. Rolls an 8. No rate of fire. 9 on the 16 is a 1 morale check. Leader will roll a 7, will pass. Broken unit will roll an 8, and he will fail. God damn it. Uh, step. Alright, that should be half squad. These units are DM'd as well. All right, so Goto is exposed. We have this going on here. Let's remove residuals. Let's smoke the first fires. Oh, the first fire remains. Um, he's first fired. He could fire adjacent. He could fire adjacent at a six plus one here, or six even there, or three, three even rather. Three even adjacent, and he rolls an eight, no effect. You, the pinned unit over here will roll a double halves. He'll roll two plus one against the five, five, eight here. Six on the two plus one is, is no effect. And that's it for the Japanese units. All right. Wow. We can, uh, that's well defended now. Now we got a problem. All right. So as the Americans, let's see what we can do here. Japanese units, any other defensive fire? Um, technically we could fire again here. We're not going to with a breakdown 11. And that's it. Let's take the first fire is off. And advance fire for the Americans. We'll have, um, 6, 10, 10 plus 1 here. I roll a 4 on the 8 chart. Makes it a 5. It's a 2 morale track. Unit rolls a 5 and it's pinned. Followed up from this unit here, makes it a six plus one. Snake eyes makes it a four plus one. Two morale check on the same unit. He rolls a three, passes quite easily. And we'll have a uh, six plus one on the pin unit. Yeah, six plus one on the pin unit. A six, a seven on the six is a normal morale check. He rolls a seven, double pinned. And then we'll have a. We're going to. Yeah, I have the double stack. So it's going to be an 8 plus 1. Let's roll the 7 0. No, let's roll the 8 plus 1 first. 8 plus 1 into the fortified jungle. An 11 is not going to cut it. Um, we are going to fire up here, though. Uh, let's go with a. Let's go with a 4 plus 2 on the top shelf. 8, no effect. All right. All right, going from that, let's go with the Americans' route phase. We're going to route these guys back a hex. At least they're not cx anymore. All right, and then we, that's it for those. Oh, these guys are route, route two. Hmm. Which going to route there? Nope, you know what? We're going to 
here. And then um, that's it. Let's go with advanced phase. And we might as well move over here. So we don't get killed by Japanese units. And then advance over here. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to advance him up here. He's going to advance here, both these guys here. He's going to come. Here. Let's try that. Actually, we can go like that. In the seven zero. Go here. Hmm. The angle's so bad. Sorry, guys. All right, all the action is going to be like right here. So we've got a ambush over here. An ambush over here, both against pin units. Uh, this is a raider unit. Let's do the raider unit first. Japanese is pinned. Um, I'm raider going into the jungle, so my values negate themselves minus one, plus one, and they get a plus one for being pinned. So Americans actually have an advantage in this one here. And Americans actually do ambush with a three die roll versus a six die roll. So that would be a one, be a three to two minus one for the Americans. No hand to hand combat, three to two minus one that makes it a seven for casualty reduction. And I roll a five, which will straight up eliminate the unit with no retaliation due to the ambush. How about we deselect the unit? All right, takes care of that. Let's go with the other ambush on this side here. We've got, um, no minus one for the Americans because he's not Raider. We have a Japanese, but he's pinned. Plus one. American is plus one going to jungle. Going straight up even. And we've got a one and a two for both sides, respectively. And no ambush. The American will go at a one to one. And he will need a five for casualty reduction. And he gets an eight. Japanese unit will need a one to two. And he will need a four for casualty reduction. He rolled a nine. No effect there. That will, that will turn into a melee. Prep fire probably comes off a little bit. What do you think? All right, that will turn into a melee. That might be a problem. All right. Uh, concealment gains. Everybody over here will be concealed. We go to Japanese. Player turn three. All right, so here we are, Japanese turn three. What do the Japanese need to accomplish? They have turn three and turn four only to move. So Americans are on the doorstep. I think they can withstand a shot here from the neighboring unit. So these units are going to assault here. I think we can do that. We have a nine and an eight morale and a plus two terrain. Very good. This unit's looking real good. This guy's looking real good. And this guy's looking real good. So right now, the Americans really don't have jack shit. And they've lost uh, their main leader here. Broken with a broken unit. They do have a strong force here. 
um, and they do have a strong force here. But they need to be able to get some good rolls and blast these guys away. So if we just want to skulk back, they won't be able to fire upon us because their main machine guns are taken out over here. The machine gun group there can't fire on us anymore. So, um, and we've got units wrapped up in melee here that we can reinforce if one, if desired. I don't really think that's necessary considering Japanese will be hand-to-hand -hand combat. That will probably go into our favor as the Japanese. And um, so I think losing that leader with that two minus one shot with an excellent roll uh, and broke that entire stack is going to be very problematic. Those guys are essentially gone for the Americans because one unit can self rally next turn, move back into position, and get one shot off at the end of the round, at the end of the game. So that one shot essentially took those units out of the game. We're going to have to get some lucky dice rolls. That's all we got to say. And uh, I'm not so sure that we can, uh, we can swing this. We're going to have to get all, even for the Americans, they're going to have to get all four. Oh, these right here. This one's a bit of a stretch. We can, we don't have enough forces to combine to that. Maybe the single unit up here, if he rallies, can come down here and contest. That's probably the only option. The attack back onto this unit over here is pretty much gone at this point. So um, that's where we are in terms of defending. So I think the Japanese will just skulk this turn. <laughs> Americans are eight morale. We don't need to really do anything. So the rally phase comes. The, the Americans will attempt to rally the leader here. And he will roll a nine and not get anything. Too bad the Raiders can't self rally. That's too bad. Uh, can't get anything there. These guys are all concealed. Not really going to worry about it. Again, the Japanese do not need to attack. They just need to defend. So they will just skulk in every position they can. Uh, prep fire none. Skulk, 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 skulk. And be done with it. Matter of fact, he'll gain concealment at the end of the turn. So we'll have that handy dandy ready. Uh, Americans defensive fire. There is none. There are no units visible. Uh, advanced fire, none. Route phase, none. Advanced phase. Um. Yeah. Go right back to where we were. And this guy, yeah, he's going to stay at level one. I think that's a good defensible. He might, uh, you know, advanced phase here that will DM these guys again. Um. But do we split them up? That's the question. Hmm. No, you know what? We're, we'll, we'll skulk here, DM them, skulk back. That'll be fine. Uh, might be able to get around us. I still think we got this. Easiest way is to, to move up here. We want to maximize their movement factors. So keep these guys DM'd, number one priority. And uh, I think we should be good to go. All right. Uh, concealment gains, none. Actually, these guys, will, uh, these guys will get concealment. And then uh, we'll flip it to the Marine turn four. Marine turn four. So we're going to self rally one of the medium machine gunners, uh, as was the plan. He's going to roll seven and he shall self rally. And he's got a medium. The other unit is going to be essentially out of the game, but we do have a unit that is functional. So. We're good to go on that. And we have a leader here. Needs a five. You got two of them. No effect. All right. Let's go with... Oh, so we had a melee from last round. The Japanese were the attackers. It turns into hand-to-hand -hand cl close combat. One to two for the Japanese. He needs a six for casualty reduction. He rolls a four and will eliminate the American unit. No one on the single die roll. The American has a one to one. He needs a seven for casualty reduction. Rolls a four as well. Mutual Assured Destruction. Man, these close combats have been bloody. That is a, a decent exchange for the Americans, to be honest. Um, that was turn four. No, it was turn three. Uh, 
All right. Turn four for the Marines. All right. So since he's dead back there, it looks like Q5 is imperative. This guy's over here imperative. Mortar is there. Um, do we have some prep fire? That's the question. It's going to be 10, 20 firepower, plus two. Step reduce him. Hmm. Wouldn't mind going eight plus two. This will be a 12, 15 plus two. You know what? I think we're going to have to come back here to M7 with the 8 minus 1. 8 minus 1 is going to have to probably assault move, drop some smoke. And shoot it and try and kill this bastard. Or 2-4, pick up the LMG. 2-4-5 to pick up the LMG. And it's going to be rough. So, do we have any prep fire? 8 plus 2. Hmm. I want to advance into four. I could move the leader in there. Get the advance off. We have to reduce him though. Eight plus two. I want to use the minus one for that crap. So we're gonna try a 20 chart here. I think we're gonna try a 20 chart here. Reduce him. And then Damn, one, two, three, four, five. This guy may be problematic. Yeah, he's a stickler. We're going to have to blast him. I think we're going to have to blast him 20. I don't really want to. Because an 8 plus 2 is not going to do it. 20 plus 2 might do it. 7 0 is not going to participate in the firing. Doesn't need to. So I think we're going to. Our firing is just dumb. But that guy's point blank. This guy. This guy's going to be at least the one firing. At least one of them will fire, right? So if we pull up 20 chart to rip him a new one, and if he fails, if the leader fails and he breaks and he dies, that's good. We're going to do a 20 chart. We only have one turn after that. I think it might be close. I think it might be all right. Let's go 20 chart. 20 chart plus two on the 447 and 90. We roll six. That's a respectable roll. Six on the 20 plus two is a two morale check. Okay, that's the best that we could hope for. Sergeant Ken needs a two morale check, and he rolls a four. He says, go screw yourself, you stinking bloody Americans. And then the 447 acting as a 448, seeing Sergeant Ken bounce bullets bounce off of his freaking chest plate. They say, screw you, bloody Americans, and he rolls an eight. And um, he fails. And uh, so he stepped reduced. So it's okay. I have to get a little bit of step reduction there. A little bit of, at least look like a six minus two shot instead of a four minus two. I think that's okay. Uh, that's uh, the only other prep fire would be across the street. Um, I don't think I'm going to go for it. I think I'm going to come back here, pick up this LMG, try to pick up that LMG. And then uh, attempt to kill the son of a bitch in close combat. So let's do that. Let's go a uh, two. And we're going to go four. The four, four, seven. We'll fire upon. We'll fire upon the American unit in an eight even shot. He rolls a seven, which will be a one morale check on the eight minus one. He rolls a nine, one morale check on the five, five, eight. He rolls a seven, so he is pinned in a broken unit. So that's not the best thing, because I can't even pick up the weapon now. And I can't can get going to close combat. So, um, and that would leave four residual. 
in that location. Leader's going to assault move over here just to get out of the shot. Retaliatory shot. Um, medium machine gun and the guy. He's simply going to go two. Um, mortar's not going to fire on him. Three. And so we're going to do that. And these guys are over here. We're going to go two, four, five. CX is gone. Two, four, five over here. Damn, get chewed up by that shit straight up in the middle. Let's go two, four. 16 plus one. We don't really want to go to 16 plus one. But if we get him in close combat, I think we're golden. I think we're going to, I think we're going to have to try it. Let's see. We're going to get behind here. It's going to be close. It's going to be close, people. Take the 16 chart. We're going to come back. He's going to... He can't move out. We're going to... No, he'll be his turn next turn. So we may have to body block that shit, huh? We're going to assault move here. We're just going to go two here. 16, 16, 16. In that case, he may get shot. All right. We're going to go one, two, one, two. He gets one shot at me. So he doesn't fire at the five, five, eight over there. <laughs> so the Japanese unit will fire defensive first fire on the five, five, eight. Uh, that's going to be a 16 plus zero because they were a minus one leader. And that's a seven average roll in the 16 chart Two morale check. Come on. Nine is not going to make it. Yeah. I don't really think the guys are up in there. So I have to be a damn. And he's just going to DVDM them. That's what he's going to do. So it doesn't really matter if he redms them. All right. And then uh, that's it for that. So he fired and does he get ready to fire. Actually, he did get ready to fire. Oh, my God. So we're going to 8 minus 1. He got ready to fire. We're going to follow up 8 minus 1 over here on the uh, the guy we could see. And a 4 with the rate of fire. So it makes a 3. That's a K2. American morale is a six. He was pinned, and he's a half squad. A pinned, of course. Yes. That's hilarious. Okay. This looks pretty grim now for the Americans. Everyone's pinned in, in certain positions. Okay, we're going to fire six even at the guy in the open. The Japanese. Rolls a seven on the six chart. Makes it a normal morale check. Unit rolls an eight and is pinned. Well, pinned is really going to kill it now. Uh, in that case, we'll fire six plus one into the woods. No, we'll fire the mortar into the woods initially. Uh, six will hit. Two minus one. And another three. That's not bad. A1. Who gets it? It doesn't really matter. One, one, one. Uh, one just one guy select. Uh, only one guy's going to be selected anyway in... in um, and start a kit. So with everyone prepped. Good lord. Okay. All right. So be it. And then that's it for defensive fire. I guess he could fire adjacent again. He'll fire four, four up one adjacent. Seven is a pin check. It's not going to have any effect. And that's it for the Japanese. Wow. Okay. The pins were crazy. All right, the American advance fire. He gets to have a, was that a four firepower? I think we calculated that before. Four up two. Ten's not going to cut it. This guy's broken, I think. All right, 
he's broken there. So what's that's going to leave us? No fire from anyone from just from him. Everyone else prep fired. Okay, well, that makes it easy. Right, right. Let's go some routes. Uh, two, four. Hmm. Uh, two, four, six, I guess. And then, hmm. Hmm. All right, that's uh, we're gonna have to try something really wacky here. Uh, he's going to have to route. Let's go two, four, six, two, four, six over there, and then he routed this way in advance phase. We're gonna move the leader here. And son of a bitch. All right, we'll go up into here. See what happens with that. And he has to advance here. No one else can advance. Okay. Pins come off. I forgot. I'm not sure if I forgot the morale checks. Sorry about that. I think I took them. I think I took them. They're only with morale checks. I don't know. Damn it. I hope I didn't forget them. Let's see. That might make a difference. I don't know if I rolled them or not. All right. We'll just move on. Uh, makes it more exciting anyway. Last Japanese turn. Let's see. Uh, rally phase. We have an American rally here. And we'll need a full five. Well, the nine, not going to happen. We're going to have a nine over here. At 11, that's very useful. And uh, we have a DM here that will come off. All right, and so let's go with the Japanese turn. Um, hmm. We can fire point blank here to get a minus one air burst. Might as well. Uh, yeah, might as well prep that guy first. We'll fire the mortar into the seven zero. Uh, seven to hit. Uh, that will be a five. Uh, five to hit with the rate of fire. With a one on the die for rate of fire. Two minus one on those units. And eight minus one is a seven on the two. No effect. Rate of fire. Fire again. That is a two and a one. No rate of fire due to the range. That is a hit. Result is a four minus one. Three on the two, which is a one morale check. The seven zero leader. Gets an 8, fails his morale check. The 558 five, gets a 4 and passes it. That is the first passed morale check in like two turns. So that's going to be interesting. These units are prepped. While the mortar's prepped, that's 3 firepower. And these guys are concealed. Hold on, hold on. The leader wasn't concealed. Um, I rolled low enough to hit. I rolled like a 3 to hit. So that would have been a hit. So that would have been, um, yeah, that would be fine. I rolled the three to hit, which would have hit the concealed unit. I'm not going to worry about the, the uh, acquisition, to be honest. And then we'll fire. Um, we'll fire six adjacent. Leader direction, 11, no effect. And uh, the medium machine guns will fire into the K2 location. At 16 plus 2. 16 plus 1 with a minus 1 leader. He rolls a 7. At least his rolls are average. 7, 8, 1 morale check. The leader, 7, 0. Rolls a 6. He is fine. The 5, 5, 8. He rolls a 5 and he is fine. Oh. That's interesting. 
All right, uh, 447 down below. Uh, uh, he will fire. We can step reduce people. He will prep fire and he will fire at uh, eight adjacent, eight plus one adjacent. Because if we could step reduce, we can just sit there. We're not going to go anywhere if we break. All right. Eight plus one, seven, eight on the eight is going to be a morale track for the American unit, and he rolls a seven. He is fine. The other unit will, will be looking at a large fire attack. Uh, let's let's break it up. Let's go. Um, let's go four firepower. Let's go eight firepower at the five five eight in the open. A nine is a pin task check. Seven is a successful pass. That will fire the LMG on the 238. LMG rolls a 10. All right, nothing going on there. All right, so those guys have prepped fire. What? This unit over here. He won't need to do anything. Uh, actually, he will assault move. He'll assault move the medium machine gun. We'll then fire upon him at a four plus two because he's concealed. It's a four plus two shot. Uh, five on the four plus two is a seven, which is a pin task track, which the unit passes by rolling a six. It loses concealment, but that doesn't matter. I hopefully intend to break that unit and regain the concealment anyway, and that will secure that um, location. That's it for the prep fire. No movement other than that. Defensive fire. Mm, let's go. Oh, actually, I, I've got to try to pick up the LMG. Let's back up, pick up the LMG. It's going to be a plus two die roll modifier to pick it up. Roll four, plus two is a six, doesn't find it. So it's fired an eight plus two adjacent from the American unit. A nine, no effect. Hmm. All right, we're going to fire 12. We're going to fire a first fire here. Two. And we'll just clone it. All right, he's going to fire 12, both these units here. We'll fire upstairs, 12 plus two. A 12, that's not gonna do very much. And the 558 will fire, it's not gonna do anything there. Well, that's the Japanese player's last turn. He either has to advance into close combat with me or do nothing. We're going to fire at the 347. All right, so that's going to be an 8 plus 2. Firing at the medium machine gun is meaningless because they do not occupy a victory location, and this is the Japanese player's last turn to move. I roll an 8 on the 8 plus 2 is a miss. So we have these two units yet to fire, and that is it. <whistles> Shit, this is getting tight. So we're going to lose our concealment here because we're going to fire. Um, let's fire an 8 plus 2 adjacent. Come on, no 8s. How about a seven? How about a seven? Uh, nine pin task check. Good enough. Better than nothing. And pin task check. He passes it perfectly. The other unit will fire. Same location. Eight plus two. Ugh, rolls an eight. Rolling, rolling eight sucks ass, people. Don't roll your eights. If you roll eights, destroy your dice. Go buy some more. You make money. And um, that's it for the defensive fire. Route phase. There is one leader. We're going to go uh, one. Two, three is the closest cover. And then we're going to continue on over here to four, five. You lousy bastard. All right. All right, Japanese, you look like you're getting your asses kicked. And now you're just major kicking ass. <coughs> All right, I think this guy's pinned. This guy was pinned. Nope, he advanced fires. My bad. He forgot to advance fire. So six up, six up one, advanced fire. My bad. On the bastard two three eight. That's six seven on the six is a normal morale check. Two three eight. Can you withstand the pain? Can you withstand the pain? Six. You barely can, simply because the other die didn't fall in the stupid ass box. All right. That is a battle battle of wills over there. Breaking doesn't matter. That's going to be brutal. All right. Interesting situation here. We have a route phase. They all everyone routed. We have an advance phase by the Japanese. Stack them high, bitches. And, um...
Yeah, we just have to stay there. We simply have to stay there because we can't let the Americans just run in there and, and counterattack over here. Interesting. Interesting. Sergeant Yoto. Yoto! They actually want both of those in that same location, but hey, shit happens. Um, yeah, I don't see anything changing. Uh, they got to get lucky. Americans, turn five. I think if you give the Americans another turn, I think it'll be, uh, I think it gives them too much time, to be honest with you. I kind of like this, the rapidness of the scenario where you just have to bust ass and you can't screw around. You're not allowed to screw around. So we have some rallies. Hmm. Let's get the leader here. He needs a nine. Get up, you little lazy bastard. All right. He's fine. Eight minus one, doing nothing. We've got a nine in the background. You son of a bitch. Get up! An 11. He's worthless piece of shit. And uh, this guy over here, he needs a three. A 10. Go shoot yourself. All right. So we got, God, I want at least one free self-rally. This guy needed to be a self-rally here. can throw white phosphorus. We're going to get shot to hell anyway if we throw white phosphorus. Oh, well, she's still going to shoot us, but at least that will generate a normal morale check. Because an 8 of 2 is not generous. 6 isn't generating jack shit. You can throw white phosphorus there. You can throw white phosphorus here. I wonder if you get multiple white phosphorus, if you get multiple morale checks. That would be interesting. Huh. Do we need this unit or do we need this unit? Let's roll for P2. Get up, you bastard. Ooh, a five. That almost rolled onto a nine. All right. We've got the raider over there. Jeez, I can't believe these bastards didn't rally. That's amazing. All right. So we've got some soul searching. This is what needs to happen. We could potentially fire the four firepower here, reduce his firepower by causing him to, by causing a lack of a morale check for the eight firepower plus two. Got to roll it stupid six. Uh, maybe get ready to fire. Um, also, this unit can come up two, four. Hopefully only take an eight even shot. This is just going to be, oh, I need to pick that up. Pick up the LMG. Three plus two is five. We find the LMG. I don't really think it matter. Um, eight minus one is kind of worthless. Only for units that are moving. We could probably do that. Excuse me. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we can do that. Um, so we could probably move the seven zero. Go down. We can move the 7 0 straight through these guys because they're not going to fire on the leader. They're not going to bother firing on the leader. He doesn't He doesn't serve a purpose. So he should be able to get to this back to this location and then jump into this close combat later on. The 8 minus 1. He doesn't. This 5 5 8 is good. That, that's solid because we're not going to lose that control during this turn. So we need to gain control of three others. Uh, gaining control of this one is probably not going to happen. So I think if we generate all of our firepower this way, and then throw the eight minus one into the fray here. Actually, no, the eight minus one needs to come down here to maximize our chances. We'd be okay during here. So that's the plan. Throw the seven zero back here to get a two to one. If the 557, five, the 558, five, and the 238 enter this location here, if we can get here and here, that will be seven. The 7 0 busting his ass down here will be eight, which will be a two to one against that unit. And um, so that would be at least a dice roll. We did well in our close combats. That's about it. Uh, and then the eight, and then the eight minus one leader here coming down. Either here, probably here. Make sure he doesn't get shot. We could prep fire, shoot, and then move the leader here. So he's either going to shoot here or shoot here. We don't want the double shot there. We don't need to move the leader into this location. That just, just, just doesn't need to happen. And so um, 
So that way we can at least move a unit here. If this unit breaks or somebody, we can actually double this. This unit can possibly go here and here. We could try, try to attempt white phosphorus or smoke on this location here to shroud this unit's movement to the close combat in this direction. Uh, this unit and this unit both can join to prep fire at a 12 plus two. Uh, and or this unit can drop smoke here or this unit can drop smoke here. This unit will may or may not fire upon him. And then this unit can then move to here to join with the eight minus one later. I think we're going to try to smoke option and maximize our units. Especially on this guy, he's 12 firepower. We're just going to smoke him so uh, these guys can fire, he can smoke and move, he can smoke and he can move. If he gets smoked, then he can fire. The 447 could fire on this location. We may not want at that. So let's try the smoke option. Kind of like that. Even though he stocked them up here, don't really care. But if we smoke it, it's less likely. Oof, that's going to be that's going to be 16, 25,000 firepower anyway. So this guy's got a smoke. And best best thing is we could jump over here and try like the one to fifty odds. Uh, there's no point in not doing that because we still control that location. The Japanese again, like we talked about at the beginning of the um, the uh, synopsis and scenario. Uh, analysis the Japanese do not the Japanese are stagnant they're not going to move for the rest of the game so it's the Americans have to take what they need to get right now so that's the plan um let's go with it so let's see who's going to prep fire we're going to prep fire these two units in the middle prep prep uh should we prep them separately Uh, he might get fried. Don't really give a shit. <clears throat> All right, we're going to go 12. 12 up 2, would that be the option? Yeah, 12 up 2. Come on, baby. I don't think we've gotten anything on the 12 charts. Come on! We finally met up the paramarines and the raider units. We're going to destroy these little bastards in M5. Um, yeah, no. An 8 makes it a 10. Hey, that is a pin task check. That is success. Not a when they roll five. All right, so they're prepped. So next unit, uh, we're gonna fire the 12 firepower down here, the LMG and the 558, all by his lonesome. You get to do it all by yourself, baby. Nobody does it better. All right, um, 12 up two, fortified jungles are bastards. And a 10 will not do it. Uh, okay. All right. It's all of our prep firing. Let's go to movement phase. Um, yeah, the 558 here will attempt to place smoke or white phosphorus. Let's place smoke. We need the smoke. Here's the smoke placement. Oh, got the two. Damn. Eat shit, Godo. All right, don't really need to fire on him because we know this guy might be moving. Two. And since he can't move, we'll go three. And then four. That way we get a free four plus two shot here. That's a free shot. Free, free, free shot. He's not going to fire on him because he can't affect him anymore. He's not going to take this location here. He's smoked. So that plan is going for it. So let's go. All right. Next plan is two, four. And we're not going to fire at him because only the 558 is going to damage us. Uh, seven, zero. We'll move the seven, zero. Again, the same thing. The seven, zero is not going to have an effect. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, actually, he might he might probably, he might gonna he's gonna prep fire an eight. Oof, eight up two. Yeah, he has to fire. He has to fire that eight shot. Bouncing back for half a phase. An eleven, of course. Yeah, that's typical. I'm not gonna bother mark him. And then he doesn't really need to fire. Not really. And then this is the big one here, the two four. He's just got to move it. 
two, four, and the 12 even, 12 even shot right there. I roll the Japanese dice. Uh, six on the 12, not a bad shot, no rate of fire. And a two morale check. Big check, big check. An eight and he fails. Okay, this is going to hamper us. And where's the DM? Don't really need the DM. Well, that was a, that's all really we can do. So back, back to home planet. I don't think I want to take the four minus two in the open. I don't really think it matters. I think I'm going to smoke any, uh, let's, let's, let's smoke him anyway, the five, five, eight. Let's wipe Vosphorus' ass. No, we're going to, uh, if we smoke him, he's going to wait for that move. Two, four. We're going to, we're going to wipe Vosphorus him. And the reason why is he's going to wait to dissipate anyway, because there's only one other unit to move, which is K4. And so K4, the only place he's going to go is back and come reinforced there. So white phosphorus might, uh, it will generate a morale check, but the morale check will be reversed of the, he will need like a nine. Now we'll just throw a regular... We'll just throw regular smoke. Regular smoke. Three, no effect. Two. Mm. Fire the LMG. Eight, nine, ten. It won't make an effect later. If we're going to fire, we have to fire everything. Um. And then four. He can decide to fire then. The four, four, seven will fire at that shot there because he can have two potential shots. That's going to be an eight even. A five on the eight is a two morale check. Two morale check for the unit is an eight. He will break. And that's a first fire on the unit. He first fires uh, the five, five, eight here will move two. Uh, everything under the sun will blast him. The three, four, seven and the mediums uh, be eight, uh, be 20 chart. 20 chart plus three, uh, 20 chart plus three, because the plus one and the minus one for non assault movement cancel. 20 chart plus three, piece of cake, baby. Let's go. Oh, shit. Roll to the box. 20 chart plus three. And a five. Man, this guy has no problem rolling good rolls. Five, six, seven, eight on the 20 is a two morale check. This pair of marine has no problems passing this morale check. Go screw yourself, too. All right. And, uh, he does get a subsequent shot because he could subsequent fire, which he will. So that will be a 10 plus 3. Everything is going to explode if it rolls a 9 or more. Uh, if it rolls a 5, 6, 7, 8 on the 8 is a morale check. Paramarine says, what? Those are just gnats. And he rolls an 8 in his pen. Damn. All right. Good try. Good try. This guy's broken. This is going to be super, super close. All right, and then we're going to go to the Japanese player defensive fire phase. Uh, the 12 firepower, the 6 uh, will fire adjacent, 12 plus 1. 7 makes an 8 on the 12, which is a 1 check. Wow. 558 five, makes the rolls a friggin' 9. This game is just about over. And uh, good lord. All right, so be it. And the 447 here gets to roll again. He might as well roll against the 238 since he fired and broke that bastard. Did we roll twice? No, he just rolled once. So six up one. And he cowers. All right. So we at least get something going on there. Maybe. Advanced fire phase. Uh, that guy prep fired. The medium prep fired. So we don't want to fire him again. He fired. Those guys fired. We have a four plus two down here. And ooh, a four. See, that's a normal morale check. We have, uh, it's, a, uh, it's not going to make a difference to close combat. Normal morale check is a four. No problem. All right. So the routes, uh, which come up here, advances. He might as well go back up there and he will be CX'd. I guess we could have just stayed there. We don't need to worry about all that. Technically, we could have stayed there, but you know, we really don't need that location. We do need this. We're gonna leave the medium up there. We're gonna 
join our 7-0 Valiant Leader. Man, this is going to be ugly. All right. The pins really hurt us last turn or two. So let's see what happens here. Let's go ahead and vibrate this thing around here. Just for you people that have been screaming at the map. Ah, why don't you turn it sideways? Well, don't worry about it. Um, so we've got to, let's go start with our best American chance down here since the Americans player turn. Bring this bad boy here. We need some luck. Come on. We got our Marine good luck charm right here. So we need an ambush here. Minus one. These guys are not raiders. Uh, this guy over here is a raider. And the leader's with him as well. This guy's not a raider. No ambush there. This guy is a raider up top. So big differences there. So God, that 9 minus 1 hasn't come back at all. So, got an ambush down there. You ready to rock and roll? Let's rock and roll, baby. Okay, 5 for the Japanese, 2 for the American. Um, the, the leader's considered a raider, which cancels the plus 1 of the jungle. The American rolls a 2, Japanese rolls a 5. Um, Japanese are stealthy, makes it a 4, but the Americans have a minus 1, makes it a 1. So it's a 1 to 4, that is an American ambush. Excuse me, so that is 6 to 4, it's a 3 to 2, minus 2. Base 8 to kill, roll a 5, he is eliminated. Alright. 8 minus 1, final day job. Good luck charm, let's go over here. Alright, Raider, that is uh, uh, plus 1, minus 1. The Japanese are stealthy, he is a net minus 1 on the roll. Japanese, oh, snake eyes, bitches. So uh, it's even up, no chances there. Americans, oh, let's roll the Japanese first, see if they clean them out just for the hell of it. That's a four to, a four to three, which is a one to one. Japanese need a five for casual reduction. Rolls a seven, no effect. The Americans are at one to two, need a three for an elimination. Oh, rolled off of the six and rolled on the five. So that's a five, so he missed the elimination there. So these guys are, are locked up. That one's pretty close. All right, ambush here. Uh, the Japanese are plus two to this ambush side advantage. Uh, Japanese roll six. Americans roll four, so that's mutual non-ambush. Americans are one to two. They need a three for an elimination. At 11, if I flip that over, if I cheat and flip that over, that would be a three. Japanese, what do you do? Two to one. I'm going to vaporize them. Yep. Six will eliminate. 11, 11 wouldn't matter even if all of them made it. All right, the crazy one here. We've got uh, the smoke's gone. The uh, leader's a minus one, and uh, he's our first line guy, so it's minus two. Uh, the Americans are minus one, plus two. So the Americans are a three disadvantage. And at three USA, ooh, six and six, makes it a Japanese ambush. Doesn't look good for the American. I have a three firepower unit in there, uh, leader, and um, two crews. Seven, eight. It's still gonna be. It's still gonna barely be three to two, three to two, and it is an ambush. So it is a minus three, three to minus three. It's only an eleven. Eleven. How about a snake eyes? No leader creation for the the Japanese that will vaporize, ultimately vaporize that guy there. He must have stepped on the bomb. So that is what we have at the end of the game, gentlemen. Thank you for watching. We have an American victory location here. American victory location here, a contested one here, failure here, and failure here. So hard fought, big impact here by not rallying here, which caused me to use the self rally. Uh, it would have been nice to get both units up. Uh, he broke anyway, so it didn't really matter. Big mortar roll here, huge impact. I would have been firing on this unit uh, for a lot of the game, and he would have been able to fire down here. Uh, it was actually pretty tight and fun and exciting. Uh, Americans, as you saw, were getting a lot more. I thought the Americans were going to walk away with this. I thought I, th I think it was a walk away. And then uh, the mini machine guns came into play and started shredding. So um, let me know if you think I kind of played it fair. If you think I biased anything. I tried to base my decisions on just sound judgment and sound tactics. Maybe going through. Maybe um, you don't be too risky in here because, again, like you see here, you got broken units. If you don't rally them, that game's over. The game is over on turn five. Using our, our uh, Marine Good Luck Charm. Uh, our game is over in turn five. So um, I thought it was pretty fun. I think you could play this one pretty quickly. Obviously, it took some time to play it. Um, but you can slam this thing down. Remember your modifiers. Uh, remember the Paramarines are not the Raiders. But your leaders are, which is Scenario Special Rule 4. Um, the Mini Machine Guns, I thought we were gonna just going to get slaughtered up here. But that's 16 firepower. 
Um, you're pretty much staring at two, two morale checks um, on them. If the Americans get on you, you're screwed, right? If the Americans jump these guys right here, you know, you're screwed. That's a simple fact. These guys are dead, and there's nothing you can do about it. He just attacks one one turn and one the other turn. Who cares? Um, and then that's it. And I did step reduce the uh, Japanese unit up here. One more step reduction would have been good. But, um, hey, that's what happens when Sergeant Kelso has a good a good thing. Again, the plan the plan was to run back and be a fire base, and that's exactly what happened. This fire base here was extremely strong. Um, I ran out of units to bring in the attack from the back, and the losses, early losses in the middle, kind of stifled that as well, and a loss close combat right here uh, caused this unit to have to be a, attacked later on. So interesting scenario. Um, I didn't expect much out of it. I expected it to be a complete um, abomination, considering how far they have to go. Um, it's doable, but you've got to press. You've got to push through. You've got to jump into close combat and take your chances. This is not a sit and wait and prep fire. You, you're just going to lose. Um, just see how uh, theoretically aggressive I became. Close to the CXs are a bitch. Um, uh, use your mediums differently, maybe. Yeah, you can you can move them up here. Absolutely. Um, that's that's an option you have. But they're on the right hand side. You're not going to get them into these positions. To fire on that on this location, you only need to get him here to fire there, you know. And then of course you can bring him down here. So factual, and for, for all intents and purposes, the medium machine guns are affecting two victory point locations. So you could put him on the ground here. You could put him here, which will be able to fire upon it. This would be a fine spot. These could fire on this location and could fire on that location. You're and you're in the jungle, so that's a great spot. That's a better spot than I had. Um, so you could definitely affect uh two two victory points, and that's what you want, right? Uh, they could affect two. Then uh, if the rest of the guys can't get two more, then that's their problem. Memes can't win everything for you. Thanks a lot, guys. Let me know if you like this sort of uh, replay analysis, solo replay. I intend to do that with more of the SK scenarios simply because I don't really play that much SK. But um, let me know if this is good. Let me know what I, I missed out on anything for you. Um, if you want me to add something, if you want me to detract from something, I will likely be using this format because these kind of look like counters. And I can look at different formats. And I can approach, I can approach defenses, you know, different, I'll probably move this blue shit out of the way, you know, just take a look, you know, when I moved from here, I had to took a look from the Japanese perspective to see where his attack's coming from, you know, back in the corner to see where the attack's coming at me, you know, it's easier to spot it that way, uh, most SK doesn't have a lot of counter clutter and bullshit like that, and you can always rotate it to the side, the side of interest, zoom in on what we're looking at here, um, I think it's a good teaching interface, um, and yeah, so uh, we can go from that. Let me know if the zoom levels are okay. It's kind of different because I look at a large screen here, 42-inch screen, and it looks really large to me. And I'm not sure how large it, I mean, it, I'm sure it looks large to you, but the recording screen's kind of small. So uh, let me know what you want to see adjusted in this sort of format, if you like it. If you don't like it, say it sucks. Don't say, ah, I hate TTS. Well, you're not playing TTS, are you? So you don't have to worry about it. If You, you know, it's just you know, whatever. But, uh, and... Uh, so let me know what you like. Uh, I like the uh, customized uh, turn marker. I'll probably be doing that for all the other nationalities as well. It's not that difficult to do. And, um, and uh, so this is a fun fun way of getting, for me to, get my, to play my SK stuff and generate content and kind of learn and decipher and pick apart a scenario. Again, based upon my own analysis, I changed my Japanese setup by just thinking about how to attack, thinking about where to defend. And I, I modified it, and it made a huge difference, you know. Uh, it made a huge difference, uh, to be honest with you. In my opinion, it made a difference. Let me know if you thought and think it made, it made a difference. Or it's like, hey, you just, you, it didn't make a difference at all. So let me know where you guys would have done some things. Put your comments down there. It's an open forum, baby. Well, let me know. And um, and then we'll continue on. Um, I think a lot of the SK scenarios are pretty fun to play. They're small. They're quick. They're, uh, they cover the basics, the basic fundamentals of squad leader. And um, once you know those... Um, you could tackle them, but you have to know them. You have to know them well. You have to know that they step reduce these, these, these guys, they will not break. And that's the point where it came at turn four, turn three. The, at that point, my Japanese didn't need to retreat anymore. They just stayed the ground because you're not going to break them out of where they need to defend. And funny thing is it just happened and they all just kind of slid into those victory slots and you just have to go get them and they know you're coming and they're taking shots. So that worked really well for me. And, um, you know, I made some, some, uh, morale checks. I missed some others. But that's just part of the game. I'm um, not worried about it. You know, I got a snake eyes, got that extra 7-0 leader, allowed me to get the K2. 
You know, I can't bitch about my Mirage tracks all the time. And uh, so that gave me a free. And that 7-0 literally was created here, moved up. No, no, no. This guy came over here. This 7-0, that's a little bastard right there. A little broken bastard. Get, up, get off my board. Get off my board. And um, so this 7-0 leader here came up here, did what he needed to do, and then came to try to go here. This is a reasonable spot where the Japanese not to attack him. Why would you attack him? I'm trying to point out, you don't need to attack this guy here. He's not going to be a threat to your defensive locations. Let him come over here. You still have the advantage as the Japanese. You know what he's going to do. You don't You don't really care that he has a minor advantage right there. You broke the unit that you needed to break. At that point, this guy was irrelevant to this situation. But it was relevant for the Americans to try to get him there because anywhere else, he really wouldn't have made a difference. And he could have made a difference here, but why not put him over here where it's, it's a, I guess it's the exact same thing as being here. But... I expected at least one or two stronger guys to get in here. But that's the way it rolls, right? This guy got pinned. You know, he could have been here. He could have been broken. That would have been two guys to get in there. I'm not sure why that guy broke. So I need to fix that too. There's a couple little technical things, like when they kind of merge together. I I don't like that. I like the counters to stack on one another. Anyway, enough rambling on my end. You guys have a great time. Go play some ASL. Go play some starter kit. Go kick some ass. Go learn some lessons. Uh, read some rules. Uh, understand the rules. I had to reference the rule book a couple times. You guys noticed me taking a break. Oh, I need to check this. I need to check that. That's normal. Don't just say, oh, I think it's this and let's go with it. Just check the damn rule book. It's very short rule book. It's very clear. It's right there. And you're good to go, baby. Just highlight the sections. An electronic rule book, highlight it. Boom, 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 boom. All over the place. Take your crayons and mark where you need to mark. And you're good to go. It helps so much. And thanks for watching. Take care. And we'll see you next time.